If you're a boho babe who describes yourself as spiritual but not religious, you're probably gonna love today's episode. Go. This is Laugh Cry DIY, I am Katie, and today we are doing a very exciting furniture flip for a very exciting future makeover. Stay tuned next week. In this makeover, I have a very common problem. I have a small space and I need something that fits exactly into that space. And obviously we're trying to save money, we're on a budget, and I recently found this cabinet. It's cheap, it's MDF, it's giving me like 90s executive businessman. So it is totally fine. But the space we wanted to go into is going to be a serene, tranquil, somewhat boho inspired environment. And so I wanted to do something to this piece to make it feel a little bit more mm, intentional. The good news is that we don't actually have to do an insane, full 360, 585, what? Makeover. Now in the past, I've been very inspired by bone inlay furniture. It's a handicraft from India, it's very beautiful. So I thought instead of totally changing the color here, why don't we just add some beautiful stenciling to make this piece feel a little more intentional and aligned with the vision that we have in our heads. Alrighty, step one, um, these handles are fine, but they are not for us today. So we are going to take them off and I'm gonna replace with this kind of more dark, Mm, brown, rustic, I don't know. It's just not this, okay? And normally I would use wood filler to fill in a hole, but today we're just using spackle because it's all I have on hand and we're gonna paint over it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Perfect timing, kiddo. This is Baguette if you don't know my cat. There's a lot going on. I have wiped this baby down, and today we're gonna do a mix of stenciling and some just hand paint work. I am just gonna do the lightest, lightest sand down with a 400 grit, this is incredibly fine sandpaper, but we basically just wanna give it a little bit of texture so that the paint will stick. Now today I have a few pre-cut stencils. We're using white Krylon finished chalk paint. I have a variety of these mini little daubers. Um, I like to use these because you can also use these like foam stamp brushes, but I find that they're so spongy, they collect so much paint that a lot of times it's hard to control how much paint goes down and you'll push it and it'll bleed under the stencil. So we will be kind of freestyling this pattern, but I'm just gonna start by taping the pattern down with a simple washi tape. Now, I recently heard a very clever tip that if you want your stencils to be incredibly precise, coat them with Mod Podge around the edges of the stencil anywhere you want a clean line and then go over with your paint. I'm not gonna do that today. So let's go in with our first one. I'm actually going to wipe down the front and back of this to basically make sure we have a clean stencil um, because if you keep the paint on there the more you push in the more it'll push under the stencil but so far we're looking beautiful I really can't believe how easy this is and yes I'm using my own shirt to wipe off the back of the stencil and I'm also cutting this little q-tip uh, kind of in half so that I have a little edge just to clean up Alrighty, so I don't have a particular vision for this. I just kind of want to freestyle it and I kind of want to build it from the inside out. So next up, something that's super common on these types of pieces is a lot of like dot work. So I'm just going to freestyle and add some dots of different sizes in and around to start to fill it out. Can you tell I've never smoked a cigarette in my life? Now we love a happy accident, so 
As you can see, right here is where I use tobacco to fill in the holes of the hardware. And it actually works so well in the design, I'm just gonna incorporate it. And we're just gonna add matching dots on each side. And we're adding a new stencil to the pattern. That is the most stunning reveal I've ever seen in my life. Wow. I know your mom probably didn't tell you this, but just always make sure to clean your stencils in between stenciling. It's the key to success in life and it will make you millions of dollars. I did these ones on the side and um, I couldn't get the stencil as flat as I wanted to, so we gotta do a lot of cleaning on these. All right, so I've been using different stencils for different portions, and some of them just definitely look different than the others. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna incorporate elements of one stencil into the other and vice versa. For example, we have a lot of these little like pretty um, kind of dot spikes, I'll call them, that I'm adding into the middle portion, and we're gonna add some larger dots to the outer edges. Okay, and now I'm going in with an actual toothpick to do some really, really tiny dot work all throughout. No, 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 no. Get out of here. No. Next up, I'm just going in by hand with a brush, just adding a little detail just to start to fill in space. Oh, shut it. And thus far, we do have a lot of either round shape or kind of teardrop shape. And I wanna get some more like geometric harsh lines in there. So I'm adding in some like diamonds and squares. As you can see, we don't really believe in giving the eye a break in this house with this design, but it is stunning and I will not apologize. Yes. Is there anything better than a cat in your lap and a project to do? And we're just finishing off with a few details. I am not gonna do all three sides because the space it's going in won't really be seen. And to be honest, this is a lot. Do you see? It's a lot. Last but not least, we're hitting the entire edge with dots. All right, you guys, um, I spent a long time doing a second coat on all of the design. And last step, we are going to coat it with the Verithane Ultimate Polyurethane. This is a water-based sealer. Um, it's clear, so it's very boring to watch this go on, but it's an important step to do if you're using chalk paint especially and you don't wanna finish it with wax. And now it's everyone's favorite time. We're putting that hardware back on. And pro tip, the um, screws I have for this hardware are a little bit long, and so there was some looseness back and forth. So I just added a few little washers in here to fill that space, and now goes on tight. And now my friends, after long last, I think it is finally time for your big reveal. Thank you guys so much for watching. I have to say, I cannot wait for you guys to see this in the official space. Even though it looks complicated, it was pretty simple to do. It's kind of soothing just to go piece by piece and fill in and repaint and repaint. So please come back next week to see the full makeover. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And until next time, don't let anyone tell you that you can't save thousands of dollars by spending 12 plus hours painting.